Hi everyone and welcome. In this review note, we are going to look at controlling which group policy objects are executed by which users or computers. One of the ways we can do that is with something called security filtering. If I look at STUI as an example, authenticated users can process this group policy object. But what if I've got a group policy object applied, in this case, at the domain level, and I don't want all of those downstream users or downstream computers to process that? One of the things I can do is, instead of using authenticated users uh, for STUI, let's say this is going to be our ops users only. So I'm going to add a new group, which is my ops users, and I'm going to get rid of authenticated users. By doing that, that means that my authenticated users won't be able to process anymore. But there's something really important that pops up here saying that group policy requires each computer account to have permission to read the group policy object. And by removing authenticated users, I'm going to wreck that. So I can very easily fix that, though, by coming over to delegation. And I'm going to add in the domain computers group. That's this one. Let's expand it out so you can see it. This one here, domain computers. And now what that means is Domain Computers has the ability to read that particular GPO file to apply it. Again, looking back at the scope, that is not in the list. So still only the ops users. I'm going to change Kitty in a similar way. I'm going to add in for Kitty the HR users group. I'm going to take out authenticated users. And I'm going to, in delegation, add in the domain computers. So this guy here, and we should be all good to go. Now, what will end up happening when I log in with that Sally Smith account that we've been using before, she should get Stewie because she's a member of the ops group. So she has Stewie right now, but let's force the update and we'll see if that still applies as it should. Okay, connect out, connect back in. And sure enough, Sally has Stewie as her wallpaper. Now, what if we log in with somebody who's in the HR group? So I'm going to connect back into that same client, but I'm going to use a different account. We haven't used this one before. And we can see that the John Jones account, which is a member of the HR users group, has the cat wallpaper. Again, just to summarize, we configured the kitty group policy object to use security filtering so it only applies to the HR users. And we configured STUI to apply only to the ops users. And in both cases, we changed the delegation by adding domain computers so that the file that defines that policy is readable. Now, why would we do something like that? You know, do we have some other options? Sure. You know, I could take the staff organizational unit and I could create more subordinate organizational units say one for the HR users, one for the ops users, put the appropriate accounts in the different organizational units, and I could go that way and it would work the same way. That would add more complexity to my OU structure, whereas in this case, by using security filtering, I'm not really adding any more complexity as far as the uh, GPOs are concerned. The only thing I'm really doing is going through and configuring who those GPOs will apply to based on the security groups of which they're members. And in many cases, we look at that and say that that's a simpler way to go about it. That's a wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.